Don Barnes here with Red Barnes Audio, and today we're going to look at Studio One Punch and Roll with version 3. Most of you know that Punch and Roll allows for a pre roll. So I'm going to set my little cursor right here, and then I'm going to look at my metronome setup, and I can tell right now I have three seconds set up for Punch and Roll. So let's do some Punch and Roll, and then we'll go back and talk about the details. First thing, when I press record, it's going to run back three seconds, start the recording exactly at this cursor. Punch and Roll. What's the big deal? Make a mistake, easily retake. Start too early, peel it back. And too late, piece of cake. Now that is some really great copy. Well, whatever. Now, a couple cool things. Put in a 10 millisecond crossfade. There's not going to be a click between those two sections. So that's something we're not going to add out. We have one at, we have one at the end. We can add it. Just slide this back. This is non-destructive. Remember that I started and I had some more audio there. If I wanted, I can peel this back and, and look at that old audio. If I started too early or too late, I still have it there. So I have a layer on top. If I ended up starting at a point that I didn't want, there's a couple keystrokes and I can slide this audio around and fine tune where the audio starts. Now, the, frankly, if you're doing this right, you don't need to do any of that because what's going to happen is in context, you're going to get your breath right here and come right into it. And you listen to this before, so your pacing is really sweet and works just fine. So you don't need to adjust this very often, but if you do, it has the tools to do it. So let me show this again at a different point. I'm going to start right here. I'm just going to punch in. Make a mistake, easily retake. Start too early, peel it back. And too late, piece of cake. So you can see at this particular point, one of the things that isn't obvious is that mine is set to start recording two seconds early before the official start point. It's picking up whatever I'm saying. So if I wanted, if I was talking along with this, and many people do that, they talk along with their original audio so that their pace and feel matches it about as close as you possibly can. When you're done, you don't hear these seam points because of the nice crossfade. It just does everything right. So let's do this again. I'm going to come right in here. I'm going to record this again. But now I'm going to make a couple mistakes in a row, and I'll show you some great features. Make a mistake, easily retake. And if I blew it here, I can Control Z, and I can press record again. Make a mistake, easily retake. So as long as the recorder is running right here, no matter what mistake I make, assuming I want to go back and just redo this whole take, all I need to do is Control Z and press the R key. Make a mistake. And everything's reset. easily retake. So it was reset exactly to the same spot over and over again. And I could do it again. Control Z. It takes that take out and puts the cursor back. And with a single key, I can start again. Make a mistake. Easily retake. And so here I blew it again. So I'm going to stop that. Now, if I accidentally press the space bar, yeah, with a key, I can go back to the same point, Control Z, I can undo it, and I get to start again. In other words, if you ever make the same mistake two or three times on the same section, you can go back as many times as you want and stop it, undo that audio, and start a new take. And then, because Studio One supports macros, if I want to do that all in one step, I have a simple thing. I'll just press this button here. Now, I have it mapped to a keyboard shortcut, so I can press one key and watch what happens here. Make a mistake, easily retake. And this was a mistake, and I know it's totally garbage. So with one keystroke or this button, make a mistake, easily retake. And you can see that all it did was it took away that old one, and with one simple keystroke, now I'm doing it from the macro button, but it'd be a keystroke as well. If I press this keystroke, it'd make a mistake, easily retake. And it reset. And I can do that over and over again as many times as necessary. So if I have a problematic phrase or a word that I don't get, make a mistake, easily retake. Start too early, peel it back. End too late, piece of cake. And what you can see is over and over again, I can just go back and reset that as many times as it takes for me to get that take. And immediately I get the pre-roll happening again with everything deleted. And if I wanted to, remember it's non-destructive, so behind the scenes that old audio is there. So I can do all sorts of things in terms of peeling things back as necessary to get them out of my way. So it's a really great facility. So a couple things about it. 
the pre-roll timing it's set up with the metronome while it says bars there in my configuration that's seconds so it could be three seconds five seconds two seconds whatever you want i know when there is i like four seconds when i'm working in the real world i set it down to three for this demo now for two keystrokes control z and r i'm back and running again if you want to you can obviously just do it with a single click or a single keystroke and then if you accidentally press spacebar at the end of something, then you can go back to the same point and by simply pressing a couple keystrokes and you're back. So resetting up for those retakes is really easy and simple. If you want, you can have my macro. I give this away. It's on the, the Facebook group, so you can find it. That address is at the end. Go to the Facebook group. It's in the file section. You can have this macro free and allows me to do everything in terms of a restart with one single button. Start too early peel it back and I make a mistake on this one this wasn't what I wanted all I'm going to do is press one key retake start too early peel it back and too late piece of cake now there's some other things that happen here sometimes you have to adjust something with a couple keystrokes I get a, a different cursor here I can slide this audio back and forth and frankly if you do it right now this means as you become experienced with punch and roll you don't need to do this, but you can do this. If you need to, you can do this and adjust where these pieces of audio fit in here. But as you become more experienced with punch and roll, you won't need to do that. You'll be able to go in and get it right because you hear it, you can talk along with it, and then the recorder comes on, you don't have to pay attention to the details. The technology gets out of your way so that you don't have to think about it. So punch and roll is more than just not having to edit when you're done, because by the time I'm done with a punch and roll session, I don't have any editing to do. My audio is already in place, and when you get good at it, you lower your editing time dramatically. For some people, they'll cut 20-30% of their total time just from doing punch and roll. But then, the other factor that's even bigger is that the performance is better, more consistent, and smoother. Now, I'm an editor. I can fix your audio. I mean, if you do it some other way, I can sculpt things and I can change the volume on this to match that. And if this is a little too loud, I can just bring you down just a little and, and make these fit. And I can make all sorts of tweaks. And I can make it sound, you can hand me almost anything, and I can probably make it sound like it was one continuous session. But if you're using punch and roll effectively, you hear it, it sets you up, and you can make it smooth without having to do any of these workarounds where I adjust volume on a section, uh, something like that. Sometimes I have to sculpt things, and I'll do it. I've done it hundreds of times and make it sound just like it was recorded that way as one continuous streak. And a few people who haven't done a lot of this, they'll get bothered by seeing all these different events. So we can take and instantly do this and make it one continuous streak of audio. Those events don't hurt you. Uh, when you understand them, there's real power in them because you can adjust things within them. There's just 20, 30 power things you can do while editing with those events. In fact, people that do this a lot, they create their own events. And then if they don't want to see them, you can hide them all just as well. So there's some great things going on here that make it easy when you combine your punch and roll and your non-destructive editing. So sometimes I would just want to come in and adjust a phrase or re-record a little section, my proofer came back, or I heard something while, while editing that I don't like, and I can draw a little loop in here. And then I can try to fit in my audio right in that. Now, I don't usually do this, and I'll tell you why in a minute, but I could do this if I want. Take, easily retake. Uh, I didn't do that at all right. And too late. So I was supposed to be start too early, peel it back. And I can go back and do that again. Take, easily retake. Start too early, peel it back. And I'll show you why I don't do that. Because you can do that, and it works great. It does exactly what I want to, and I can come in, I get my pre-roll, and then I record that. What I normally do instead, let me undo that, Control-Z, Control-Z, now we're back here. And instead, I'm gonna engage pre-roll again. Boom, make a mistake, easily retake. Start too early, peel it back. Oh, and look, I went too far. Boy, is that terrible. No, it's not. Just simply grab this edge, bring it back, and now we're okay on that. If I if this was too early or too late, I'm gonna be able to grab that thing and I'm gonna slide her around where I needed it. 
So if I need to do a punch in, they come back later, I can just punch something in as long as I get the start point correct. If I go over a little on the end, it's no big deal. In fact, I don't mind that. I can just go ahead and readjust it easily right from this particular point, this seam between the two. And like I said, I put in the crossfades automatically. So you can do punch-ins and revisions. I have a whole revision strategy. In other words, when I'm doing revisions, I don't, I've thought about the process and I work toward being as efficient as possible. What needs to happen is our focus needs to be on the read and the performance. The whole goal of punch and roll is to get the technology out of the way, not to be focused on how this works or all these cool features. And yeah, I get excited about the cool features, not for the features, but for the time savings and the higher quality that I can get when doing this correctly. So if you have questions, be sure to join our Facebook group because we have all sorts of information in there about punch and roll, about Studio One, and you can ask questions and get some ideas and see some people that are really using this well. So remember that you have a couple different things you can do. When you're recording, set your pre-roll. It'll start wherever the cursor is, and then you can, with one button, go back and restart it again if you need to. If not, you get to the point, you record five minutes and it's perfect, and then you make a mistake. You go back to a logical point here, you hear your pre-roll, and you keep on going. So there's just a lot of additional options that I'm not talking about, but it's not just punch and roll. It's punch and roll combined with a non-destructive editing that allows us to come back in later. I'm not just doing undo. This was recorded much earlier in our session, and I still can adjust those points. And if I needed to, I can go through and I can adjust where this audio sits in here I can do both at once, I can do one or the other, depending on what I select and what I'm doing. It's really interesting what you can do with this technology and make something sound perfect that didn't start that way. But really, after you're doing it a while, I don't usually adjust any of these things. The pre-roll gives me enough information to hit my next mark and make that piece of audio fit together seamlessly, including my breath, including my timing. I'm kind of a nut about timing and pacing and this allows me to have it nearly perfect. I mean, as perfect as I can do, and then I'm gonna improve my read, I'm gonna improve my narration over time, but I want the technology to fall away in the background. So join our group, and if you have questions, be sure to ask in the Facebook group. All these techniques work in the free version. If you're doing narration, I highly recommend the artist version because it has some great tools for exporting this, and I those tools that are sitting right here for me automatically go ahead and do some limiting and do some expanding and some other things to make my editing even easier. There's a hundred other things we could have gone over today, but I'll leave it there for now. So we'll see you on the wires, and I look forward to seeing you in one of the Facebook groups.